And here we are today worshiping the Lord on week 107, back in live services for 107 weeks. We've been here praising and enjoying Jesus, and the Lord has kept us, amen, has kept us and watched over us and caused his face to shine upon us. I want to wish you a happy Pentecost Sunday today. What a day this is. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about that. It, it is highly significant. The day of Pentecost represented the birth of the church age as well as the beginning of the last days. And here we are today living in a day like today, serving the God of the Bible. I want to know how many people in here today are spirit filled. You've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Let me see your hands. Praise the Lord. I have the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and the Holy Ghost has me. I mean, they're glad about that. I'm, I'm proud of it. I was somewhere the other day and someone asked me, said, so what do you do? I said, I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I tell people about Jesus and I'm spirit filled and I'm happy about that thing. I wanted, to set, I wanted to set the atmosphere right just in case they wanted to come back the wrong way. I want them to know that they're talking to somebody who is just glad to know the Lord. I'm glad to be saved. I'm not ashamed of the church. I don't apologize for the church. I'm not ashamed of Christianity. I don't think Christianity needs to be tweaked, checked, fixed, adjusted, or anything. All, all Christianity needs is for us to obey it. The Bible is right. And how many love the Lord today? And you, you agree with that. I am just thankful. I'm on fire for God, and I'm proud. And also today is... Uh, at least we proclaim it here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ because we are not going to give an inch. I don't think that we should allow a month in the year to be dedicated to perversion or anything that's against scripture. Am I still at the Upper Room? I praise the Lord and I want to wish you a happy Jesus Pride Month. Amen. Amen. Now since today is communion, I, I, I'm not going to wave my flag, but next Sunday, I'm going to wave the flag. <laughs> praise the Lord. Because I tell you, number one, the rainbow belongs to the God of the Bible. He created it. He made it. And God, the rainbow serves a, a dual purpose. It speaks to God and it speaks to man. It reminds God of the covenant that he made, that he would never flood the earth again. It reminds us of the covenant God made, that he would never flood the earth again. So when it's raining and when it's stormy and all that, when you see a rainbow, just know that no matter how, how ferocious that storm is, it can't last for so long. It'll never last 40 days. And for tonight, because God made a promise. He made a promise to himself. And I don't think we ought to give up that, that symbol. Amen. And that emerald rainbow that Sister McCoy talked about, when we get to heaven, there's going to be an emerald rainbow, according to Revelations, over the throne of God. That's going to be something to see. And uh, it's going to be the prettiest emerald, prettiest green you've ever seen in your life. And so today, we have proclaimed here that uh, the month of June uh, at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ is Jesus Pride Month. And I tell you, where's that young lady? Where's that preacher? Huh? Sister McGivery, let me tell you something, sister. Let me tell you something. You were amazing. And she came out of the blocks. Now, she's fired up. And when my daughter told me, she said, Dad, she, Crystal said, Dad, she's a warrior. She's a warrior. And when you hear her, you're gonna, she's going to set the church on fire. And I am so proud of you. Could you hear the warrior in her? Yeah. Amen. You can tell she's been fighting for the lives of the unborn. You can tell she believes what she believes. You know, you can tell that she wasn't just standing there talking because she was selected. But it's on the inside of you. And we salute you today. Thank you so much for being a young voice for Jesus Christ. Do you not know, studies show that no one is as, as effective in reaching people for Jesus as people who already know Jesus, sharing Jesus with other people. 
Thank God for programs. Thank God for all the things that we have. But those things are not nearly as effective as someone who knows Jesus sharing Jesus with someone who doesn't. Nothing is as, as effective as keeping someone in the church as a more mature person in Jesus. Linking up with someone who is not as mature and, and sharing Christ, discipling them, standing by them. So one of the keys to church growth and for the, uh, the church staying strong is for us to have young people like that young lady who, can, who will stand on the word of God and proclaim God's truth. Now we had a little technical difficulty. Somebody gave a mic with a weak battery. Here we were responsible for that. See, we can't have them kind of problems because I want to put it out there. So we got to figure out a way to doctor it up and fix it. But we're gonna put your speech. We need, we need that needs to be out there. Amen. Don't, don't make me have to have it to come back and do it over. But I want it right. Amen. So the technicals have to be right. I'm sorry, no, no. Technicals have to be right. You know, they have to be right because we, we, we're in a battle. We're in a battle. They're coming for our children. They're coming for their minds. They're coming. Do you not know that the for the average person, the average person, the average child, the average individual forms their Christian, their worldview by the age of 13? By the age of 13, they've, they've set their minds to be who and what they will be for the rest of their lives. Their worldview began to form between the age of uh, 15, uh, 15 months or so of age. They began to form. This is why youth ministry is so important. And this is why smart parents get their children into youth ministry so that the kids can hear about Jesus early. And you know who already know this? The world. That's why they come after our children at earlier and earlier ages. It's only the Christian who, who thinks, well, we don't have to push Jesus right now. They got time. Just let the children be children. And the world is saying, thank you. Why are you doing that? We'll push this at them. We'll throw that at them. We'll come after their little minds with this. We'll plant this seed in their minds. We'll plant that seed in their minds while you just let them be children. Uh, youth service is too early. Too early on Sunday. I can't get up that early. You'll be up that early tomorrow. By, look, by 8 o'clock, you own 40. Stuck in traffic. And have been out there for a few minutes. Let me tell you, you got, we got to invest in our children because the enemy is coming after our children. Amen. People trying to uh, pervert uh, children. That's the devil. And somebody's going to get their head knocked off sooner or later about that. I'm just telling you. Y'all don't like it when I talk like that. But I'm prophesying. Telling somebody's little uh, fifth grader. How old are you in the fifth grade? Ten years old. Telling some ten-year-old boy, you can be a girl if you want to. They just hadn't told the right ten-year-old. That's the devil, planting that seed in that child. You don't have to say things like that but one time. Plant a seed from an authority figure. That's the devil. That's the devil. And you know what? Uh, we're not going to be silent uh, about it. And I want to thank God for our audience. While I was uh, at the women's convention, I can't tell you the number of people who walked up to me and said, thank you for preaching a gospel where you preach the word of God and you deal with relevant issues of our time. We wish our pastor would do that, but they live too far away to move, but they say we watch you every Sunday. And, and I thank God that there are people who appreciate the word of God. Amen. Amen. And see, 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 the Bible is not uh, some old book. Amen. Mankind is just catching up to the Bible. And uh, you want to know what's going to happen tomorrow? Read your Bible. You want to know what's going on today? Read your Bible. So here we are today on uh, Pentecost Sunday, and Jesus Pride Sunday, and uh, on Communion Sunday, celebrating all these things uh, today. And I thank, I thank God for his goodness, for his kindness, and, and for his tender mercy. And this Sunday is on the eve 
of our in-house men's weekend that's going to take place right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Every man, every man, every woman, every boy and every girl, every man, brethren, I, I, I fully expect every man to be in place with their wives and their families Thursday, Friday. Now, you don't have to have your family out to the football camp, uh, but we're going to be in place. And you're man enough. you got enough influence on your family to have your family in church for two nights. You know how we, we did at the Woodens household? Baby, Thursday night and Friday night, we're going to church. And uh, I, I didn't plan that either. That's, that's just the way it is. There ain't going to be no whole lot of going back and forth. We got to pray and seek the Lord and ask God to send an angel. No, we're church people. We're going to, going to church. Amen. Amen. Look at something going on. That, the light's blanking. I don't want no problems today. Amen. Seems like to me, they always get up. The devil don't, the, the, the devil don't like for the, uh, for the stuff that I have to say to be heard. So sometimes they get all in the electronics. Loose here, Satan. Amen. Man, I'm going to be preaching Thursday evening, but on Friday night, Bishop Elijah Hankins of our national church. Uh, he's a part of our general board. It's going to be here. And I want you to know, Bishop Hankins is a conservative, sanctified holiness preacher. And uh, he's going to come and preach holiness here in a mighty, mighty way. Everybody just praise the Lord. Amen. And we just thank God. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm ahead of myself. I'm uh, kind of you know, getting out of out of sorts here, but I do give honor. I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to honor everybody. Praise God. Let's give out these great leaders that we have at the church a great big round of applause because they are tremendous. Tremendous, tremendous men and women of God. And I love all of you. But let me jump in this word right here. Uh, something that God told me. You know, the way the Lord deals with me, uh, I told someone, uh, and I told him in the 8 o'clock class, sometimes God deals with me this way. If you've ever been to Atlanta, Hartsville International Airport, you, if you've ever been there, and you, there's some, there's, uh, there are areas, and I, I suppose this is true with all airports. It's true at, uh, I think, I was at RDU. There's the glass there where you can look out on the tarmac and see the planes and all that. See the planes lined up and planes about to take off, right? Sometimes that's the way God deals with, with me with messages. One's taken off and there's two or three ready to fly. Mother, somebody stopped me. They told me their name. They talked about you, Mother Martin. They were from New York. They just love you. They love your testimony, love your walk with God. They said, if you call our name, Mother Martin will know. And Mother, I should have written, I should have written the name down. You know what they say? They say there's two things that happen to you when you begin to age just a little bit. The first one is you might have a few memory problems. And the second one is, uh, I can't recall. <laughs> Amen. But the, the messages are lined up. And um, three or four weeks ago, God says to me, he says, it's time to bless the people again, again. And he says, preach this, and I'll tell you when. We, we, we got through the men's conference. And then the week after the men's conference, God gave me that message about Mary and Martha. Then the, the next week, and the Lord let me know, said, now this, this is the time to release a blessing to the saints, a blessing to the saints uh, on this Pentecost Sunday, Jesus Pride Month. It's a blessing for the saints. And God has a blessing for you. And this blessing is going gonna, gonna, it's gonna to go with you and overtake you. And, uh, and, and some good things are going to happen. And God says, what I'm doing to you, however, is not for you. I'm doing it to you for someone else. Because he blesses us for us to be a blessing. Amen. He's showing himself strong on the behalf of the believer who will stand for him. God's not using little weak, scared people. Because he's using believers who will stand their ground and just trust him and watch him move. Amen. He's in the healing. He never got out of, the, out of the healing and delivering and the setting free business. He's still doing it. And I thank God for that. 
Numbers chapter number six. Numbers chapter number six. And we're going to read in your hearing verse 22 through verse 27. Then we're going to talk to you a few minutes and just tie some things together. And God is going to bless us real good. And depending upon where, where you stand, some of the things may make you shout and glad and they may make you fight and mad. That's typically the, the effect of the gospel. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be one of those preachers that people don't have an opinion on one way or the other. Amen. When Jesus preached, they either loved him or they hated him. Nobody said Jesus is just all right. <laughs> we're going to go with him all the way and we're not going to follow him at all. I'm going all the way with the Lord. How about you today? Amen. Amen. Now Numbers chapter number six, the blessing, verse 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, say, saying, On this wise shall you bless the children of Israel. Here's how I want you to bless them. Say unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. Yes. And I will bless them. Isn't that something? He said, uh, verse 23, and speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, on this wise shall you bless the children of Israel. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You know, in this day of uh, um, synchronism, how we're trying to synchronize things into our Christianity. And I tell you what's happening, we're missing God altogether. See, because Christianity is not supposed to have things mixed in it. Once you start synchronize, synchronizing things and putting them, mixing them with your Christianity, it's no longer Christianity. You remember what Paul said about Israel? He says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. He says, they being ignorant of God's righteousness went about to establish their own. People are now trying to establish their own righteousness. They're adding things to their biblical Christianity that doesn't belong. Amen. And um, these things, they, they serve to dilute. They dilute. God's truth. And we're adding things just based on preference. And you ask people, say, well, why do you do certain things? And this is, or you talk to them about things that shouldn't be, and their response is, well, I don't have a problem with it. Well, we're not speaking about what you have a problem with or don't have a problem with. The issue is whether or not God says it's so or not. We can care less about whether we have a problem with a thing or not. It's whether the Lord says it's so or not. On whose authority do we add these things to our Christianity? Whose authority? Whose authority? Where did you read that you could uh, bring fraternities, sororities, the Masons, the Eastern Stars, and all these secret organizations into the church and make them a part of your Christian experience? On whose authority? What scripture? Where do you get the right to do that? We're just being reckless. We're just bringing things in, and we're doing it based on uh, preference. Well, I, I, I like this. Well, if we serve God, if we actually serve God according to preference, there'd be a whole lot of things going on in the church that shouldn't go 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 on. Am I right? No, we got to we got to stick with God's truth and the Lord's word. You all not saying anything to me. Um. So I want to preach today. I want to preach today. Um. The Lord bless thee and, and keep thee. The Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee. He says, on this wise shall you bless the children of Israel. I want to talk again from this subject. I preached this not too long ago. God said, preach it again. I want to preach the blessing, the blessing. God's going to bless you today. There's a blessing for you. You who are streaming, God has a blessing for you. Oh, that person who's home right now who may be a little discouraged, cheer up. God has a blessing for you. He's going to touch you. He's going to touch you in mighty ways. He has a blessing for you. 
in the name of Jesus. Sister Smith, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I remember from Sanford, Florida. God touch you right now. Hallelujah. God touch your daughter. God touch you. And God lay his hands on you. And God give you strength. In the name of Jesus. God has a blessing for you. God's turning it around right now. For his glory. For his honor. The blessing here in the sanctuary. He's blessing everywhere. The words of the late great Bishop Mason. God bless everywhere. Everywhere Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Now, here we are on this uh, Pentecost Sunday and celebrating uh, Jesus Pride Month. And Jesus Pride Month, yes, we put it in place when they proclaim the month of June as a LGBTQ plus Pride Month. Now, I saw something the other day. When I was uh, in Houston, I was speaking to uh, the, the audience, and I told them, I'll share this with you. I saw something the other day on uh, television, and um, I heard something. I was in another room, and I, I, I heard the television, and I said to myself, I didn't hear what I heard. No, I didn't hear that. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to mention it to Pam, because she didn't hear it, and because uh, I knew if she would have heard it, she would have said something to me. And she didn't say anything, so I said, I just thought I heard what I heard. I didn't hear what I heard, because I couldn't have uh, heard what I think I heard, so I didn't hear it. So I didn't say anything about what I heard, because I, I didn't hear it. I thought I heard it, because it, it couldn't have been so, so I dismissed it. Lo and behold, the thing came on again, and I heard it. So, like, oh, my Lord, I did hear what I thought I heard. What in the world? And so what it was, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I had the television on Fox News, and Fox was uh, saluting LGBTQ plus Pride Month, and Fox News is proud to recognize the contributions of members of the LGBTQ community. I said, Lord, I did hear it. And I said, Fox, yeah, Fox, Fox, Fox News, yeah. Uh, and and you know I, I wouldn't have been I, I wouldn't have expected any more out of CNN and uh, MSNBC ABC CBS and all of them but I was startled that Fox would do that but not too much you know anytime you hire Bruce Jenner to be a contributor anytime you hire a man who claimed to be a woman to be a contributor and when they have him on everybody everybody calls him. A she. Now, Caitlyn Jenner don't exist. That's that's a lie. What's real is good old Bruce. And um, uh, I'm telling you right now, I'll never participate in uh, calling a man a woman. Amen. I don't I don't do that. And what's funny to to me about the people who participate in that stuff. If you, if you believe that God's in control of the weather, they'll, they'll accuse you of not trusting science. If you believe that God will keep you if you hadn't been vaccinated, they say, well, you don't trust science. Never mind, I'm standing here and God has kept me. See, you call it what you want. Patrick Wood's doing good. And... Uh, uh, this is what I told you. This is my 106 week preaching, and been preaching two Sundays uh, on Thursday night, traveling everywhere, all over the country. God's a keeper, Amen. God's a keeper, and uh, but you're calling me a science denier because I don't believe that uh, um, climate change is directly caused by man. I think we ought to be good stewards with the country, with the, uh, the earth. We should be responsible. But uh, well, you, don't, you don't see anything happening in the weather. I do. But I think the sin of man contributes more. Just sin. Sin. You know, and you ain't going to cure sin by no electric car. Amen. 
And so the effects will, will still um, take place. So um, I'm not going to call a man a woman. I'm not going to call a woman a man. I'm not going to participate with that. And I'm not denying science. I'm not denying anything when I refuse to participate in things like that. I'm actually being correct. Now, I want to show you something. I'm going to preach today. We're going to do the communion. I want you to hear me. I show them the PetSmart ad. Because, you know, all the, all the corporations now are virtue signaling. They're all getting in it. So one of the latest is PetSmart. Uh, now, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that this is a, a, a wonderful ad, and I agree with it 100%. What you see are two women. One uh, is trying to look like a man. Those, that's, that, that's, that's a lesbian couple. I mean, you got to figure that out. It's, it's happy pride. You see the homosexual sign. So what do you think? They got a, a, a heterosexual couple that, you know, got to know that. All right. So now, now that we got that part out of the way. But here's why I agree with the pet smart part. The only, the only smart one in the picture is the pet. Because dogs don't participate in homosexual sex. A boy dog wants a girl dog. Say amen. So the dog has more sense than, than the people in the painting. Let's give the dog a big hand. Thank God for the dog. Amen. But we notice that they call this Pride Month. Pride. LGBTQ Pride. You know, pride, by definition, is excessive self-esteem. Pride. Pride. Excessive self-esteem. The reason that they are proud of their behavior is because they're walking in pride. It's pride that causes them to be proud of living a lifestyle of perversion. Why would you be proud of that? The Bible speaks of people uh, uh, in uh, Philippians 3 and 19. says, whose glory is their shame. Whose glory is their shame. That which they should be ashamed of, they're proud of. Right. You say what you want to. If a man uh, wants to have sex with a man or a woman have, wants to have sex with a woman. That's a shame. There's no glory in that. That's a shame on every level. Biology tells you it's a shame. Science tells you it's a shame. Religion tells you it's a shame. It's a shame. But they're proud of that glory is their shame. Well, what causes that? They're walking in pride. Now, the only thing about that pride is Proverbs 6 and 17 tells us that pride go before destruction. See, that pride. They are following a path that will destroy them. Somebody says something bad is going to happen. Well, I hold that something bad has happened. When you are given to a lifestyle such as that, and some of you, you've never been here before, so you, uh, if you've never heard us online, you, I imagine your jaw is on the floor. because You're saying to yourself, I can't believe you're saying that. But if you've been here, you know that this is pretty standard fare. Um, but you know what I hold? I don't believe that something bad, uh, uh, evangelist William, is going to happen. I believe that it has. See, that's judgment. That's judgment. The whole lifestyle is judgment. That's judgment. You, you don't believe me, right? Now, look at Romans chapter number one, right quick. I'm preaching the blessing, but, but I, got, I got to get to it. <laughs> but, you know, since this is what it is, I look at Romans chapter number one. You're talking about judgment. And thank God I don't get my gospel from corporations. And th that's why I don't think churches need to be partnering up too much with corporate America. 
Uh, listen, none of that money is free. The money's not free. Sooner or later, they'll tell you, once you get hooked on their breasts, then they'll tell you the cost of it. See, that's why the church has to remain a separate entity to itself. Uh, but the situation that they're announcing on Fox, that shows that we can't make a religion of conservatism. We can't make a religion of liberalism. Our religion is Christianity. Our Lord is Jesus Christ. We agree with the Bible. And we agree with the conservatives, and we agree with the liberals as long as they agree with the Bible. But you got to always be where if they leave the Bible, then we leave them. You leave the Bible, you leave me. I'm, not, I'm going with the Bible. I'm going with the Bible. I'm going with the Bible over race. I'm going with the Bible over gender. I'm going with the Bible over. I'm going with the Bible. Say amen. I'm going with the Bible. And I said to the guys today, man, we're moving into a place where uh, we're in a we're in a we're in a we're in a we're in some position. We're uh, in these last days. We're in quite a position. And uh, they said, where was that? I said, we're on the Lord's side. On the Lord's side. I thank God. I want. I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. On the Lord's side. Amen. I'm going to heaven from the Lord's side. Praise God. I'll gain from the Lord's side. And if I have to lose, I'll lose while on the Lord's side. But I'm staying on the Lord's side. I got a question for you. Who's on the Lord's side? Yeah. Who's on the Lord's side? What, what, what side is the Lord? The Bible tells you. The Lord's side, uh, side agree with the word of God. Look at, look at uh, Romans chapter number 1 verse 26. Look at judgment. For this cause God gave them up to vile affection. That's judgment. For this cause, for this reason, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change that. Uh, look at this. Did change the natural use into that which is against nature. I don't, you, we got children in the audience. I don't have to do a biology class for you women to, and men to understand why uh, lesbian sex is against nature. You don't need a biology class. All you have to do, and uh, I don't know, the lady Supreme Court nominee, she got stubbed. But all you have to do is just know you're a woman. How many know the definition of woman? All right then. All right. So the rest of y'all, as long as you know that, then you then you know. You know what works and what don't. Say amen. So now if there is an affection that causes you to crave what doesn't work, and you hear the truth and you reject the truth. And you fight to stay in that. What God does is the way God judges you is he gives you over to it. He says, okay, you can do this now. And guess what? There will be no conviction, no nothing. You'll be able to be uh, with people in public. You'll be able to participate in parades. You'll be able to marry a member of the same sex. You, you can just parade your love and declare it. And, people are, and, you, and you don't even feel bad about it. As a matter of fact, you feel free. It's judgment. That's judgment. He has turned you over to yourself. You, you were better off when you were struggling. You, you were better off when what the preacher said to you mattered. Now you're in a place where, well, all the, the Christians, they can just go, go, go down yonder. I don't care what anyone has to say. I don't care what mama has to say. I don't care what daddy has to say. This is my life. I want to be free. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to do this. This is who I am. This is my authentic self. You know all the words you hear. This is my authentic self. I'm going to be who, who I was actually created to be, even though you've, you've actually been the opposite of what you were created to be. But this is what I'm going to do, and I don't feel any conviction. And I believe people when they say that. But what it, but what it tells me is that God has passed judgment. And when God passes judgment, conviction is no longer there. You only, we're only convicted when the Holy Spirit tug at our heart. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. The Bible speaks of having your conscience seared 
with a hot iron. A seared conscience is a conscience that no longer works. The conscience to the human being is the warning system of an airplane. When the plane is going down, the, the, the system comes on and says, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. And the pilot is alerted and he can pull up and level that plane back up. Yeah, some of us have lost that warning system. Nothing is saying anything. Nothing is saying go home. Nothing is saying you know you're wrong. Nothing is saying this is not right. It used to. You used to hear it. You used to be convicted about it. You don't hear that anymore. You know what has happened to you? God's passed judgment. And you need to pray, Lord, please let me feel bad about this again. Because if you don't feel bad about a thing, you won't re repent for it. If you don't repent, you won't be delivered. Say amen. So you got to know how the kingdom works. Well, I don't have a problem with any of it myself. That's judgment. I don't judge anyone. That's a judgment. Because when you say that you don't judge anything or anyone, you are actually saying that you've come to the conclusion that the things that God says are wrong aren't wrong. Now, when was the last time you made a world or a moon or a universe? I'm headed somewhere. I'm, I'm going to preach the blessings. I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really blessing you now. I'm blessing you with the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. Look at this. It says, for this cause God gave them uh, unto, uh, up to vile affections for even the women, for even their women. Notice, ladies, they use the word even with women. You know why even with women? You know why even with women? In most societies, women are the last ones to give in. Morally. So once the women collapses, let me think about it. The guy's been down at the club acting the fool. <laughs> He's got to talk you into going down there. Most, most women, most go, go to the jail, go to the prisons, and I've already looked it up and, and talked with people who work. Go to the prisons, and most of the women who are locked up in prison they're locked up because they were doing something for some man. He got her involved in it. Yeah. See, the women follow the men. But the women uh, are the last holdout. You find more women in church than you do men. Uh, when, a fam when a marriage breaks up, nine times out of ten, it is the mother, the woman, who stays with the children. He go and get him three more wives in the process. Finish singing. The, when he finally dies, they... The, 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 the choir get up and uh, sing a hymn at the funeral. It was the 3rd of September. <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. <laughs> but that mom stayed right there with the children. You don't like what I'm saying, but I'm telling you the truth. It's good preaching. Even their women. Even their women change the natural use into that which is against nature. Look at, look at the Bible making an argument based on biology. <laughs> look at God trusting the science. <laughs> into that which is against nature. And likewise the, also the men Leaving the natural use of the woman. See, this is, this is not, uh, the Bible is not ambiguous. This is, this is clear. Leaving the natural use of the woman. And, and we got a month now in America d dedicated to pride. Pr we're proud of this. We're celebrating this. Um, leaving the natural use of the woman. Burning in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. I think that's a good word to use there. You can't even describe it in polite society. We've got children in here. Uh, doing that which is unseemly, unseemly, uh, and receiving in themselves that recompense, look at this, that recompense of their error which was meet. That's the King James way of saying, and getting what they deserve for that behavior. 
And yet, we're in a day where people are proud of that. Proud. They're proudly proclaiming it. They're all in your face now. That's judgment. That's judgment. And I, I talk to you about these things so that you'll, you'll recognize what you see. It was pride. It was that kind of pride that caused the greatest star, the greatest angel to be cast out of heaven. The mighty, the beautiful, the talented, the wonderful, the created by God, filled with colors, sounds like you would never believe. Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer. Lucifer. Once one of the most beautiful names. When you would say it, good things would just uh, reverberate through you. Lucifer. Now when you say it, it's cold. No one would name their child Lucifer. Amen. You don't want, you don't want to name your child anything close to Lucifer. Luther is too close to me. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just But anyway, <laughs> yes, Lucifer. But Lucifer means star of the morning. Star of the morning. And when he fell, Jesus took his name. Jesus says, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. But what messed Lucifer up was pride. The same pride that we see today. Pride. They are proud of living a life of disobedience. And they're coming after our children. This is why youth ministry is so important. This is why it's so important. Thank God we have a youth pastor who is unlike unlike 82% of youth pastors today because only about 12% of youth pastors today have a biblical worldview. So if, if that is the case, if that is the case, if only 12% of youth pastors have a biblical worldview, what does that tell you about our future church? Because these pastors are teaching the children. What does that tell you? We're in trouble. And, and a biblical worldview, listen, it consists of, a, a biblical worldview, it consists of all your core beliefs. Our core beliefs are critical because they determine our prince primary behavior. You act on what you believe. All of us do. Regardless of what we say, we act on what we believe. Our beliefs control us. It is the decision-making filter of us all. What you believe is your decision-making filter. It is the intellectual, em emotional, and spiritual filter that helps to understand and interpret and respond to Every reality that we experience. We, we respond to everything according to our worldview. And we can claim that we have a biblical worldview all day long. But if when things go wrong, you go to cussing. You don't have a biblical worldview. Think about what I'm saying. It is the filter. It is what controls us. Many of us who think we have a biblical worldview, if we really spent time and talked about it, we find out that we don't. Because we allow for things that a person with a biblical worldview would not allow. Now, if you got uh, 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 just twelve percent of youth pastors uh, with a biblical worldview, and they're teaching our children, and then the average Christian school today is Christian in name only, and and the public school, listen, don't even think public school you went to school to, at, because that that's gone. These are indoctrination camps. They're filling our children with the wrong things. So that doesn't give a, you know, a, a bright picture of the future. See, we got, we got to fight. Are you following me? See, so the enemy is coming after our children. The enemy is coming after what we think. And as never before, as Christians, we got to keep the word of God before us. Parents, we got to raise our children. Men, you got to come to the, uh, the, the, the weekend. What was the one thing that both shooters had in, in common uh, last week? Now, don't say something stupid like guns. 
Please don't. Please, 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 please. Please don't do that. Well, they had, they, they had, what they had in common, they had guns. I mean, don't, don't do that. That's, see, that's playing politics. That's, that's, you, you. Well, well, what was it then? I'll tell you what it was. Fatherlessness. Fathers are missing. Fathers. Fellas. Fathers. And guys, we got to be present both physically and emotionally. Some of these guys are home, but they've checked out. I mean, your body is sitting there, but you don't contribute. You don't, you don't make any decisions. You, you, when was the last time, guys, you encouraged your children to pray with you? When was the first time you encouraged them to pray with you? Say something. Hmm? In the home, when was the last time or when was the first time you said to your son or your daughter, let's, let's study the scriptures together. Most parents have failed their children. We failed our children. You know why? We, here's what we key on. We want our children to be safe. We want our children to get an education. We want our children to go to college. We want our children to make money. We want our children to be successful. We want our children to do these things. Only problem with that is none of those things are the primary reason that God says as to why he's giving you children. That's the problem with that. The number one thing that parents ought to do with that we're to do with our children is to teach our children to love the Lord. To love God. To love God. No wonder we got these problems. No, I want you to go to the NBA. Man, three feet tall. I want you to go to the NBA. NBA. I want you to be a football player. I want you to be a, a congressman, a congressman. I want you to make a whole lot of money. Thank God for all those things. But if they miss heaven, let's say, for instance, they reach all every goal, but they miss heaven. You still go to hell forever. And what if they, what if they reach none of those goals, but they go to heaven? Then you've, they, they've, they've won. They've won. And in the baby section, you're the main one that I need to talk to. Because in some cases, by the time they 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20... In some cases, it's too late. But I'm going to start right here. Teach them children while they're young in your arms. Why are they, why are they talking to me while I'm preaching? <laughs> Teach them to love God. And, and, and like when they play church and they act like they're in church and all, don't discourage that. Don't embarrass them. Encourage it. Encourage it. Encourage them. Encourage them. And as they get older, and when it's time to do all that homework, you teach them, we got to get the homework done. We got to get the homework done. Got to get the homework done. Why? Because tonight is church night. Right. Right. And we got to get you in church. Well, I got a whole lot of homework, Mom. That's why you got to come home straight from school and get that homework done. Because I want you to get the message that church is the most important thing. Serving the Lord is the most important thing. Because if you don't serve God, we're going to raise educated monsters. That's what we're going to raise. Educated monsters. And parents, many of our children have checked out on us anyway. They don't trust us. Let me tell you something. Kids pay attention, parents. It's hard to, it's hard to preach to you, right? I'm, going, I'm, get, I'm getting to the blessing. Kids pay attention, parents. Kids pay attention to what you do. Not what you say, what you do. And for many a parents, the kids checked out a long time ago because they notice you say one thing and you do another. Because you know what kids are looking for? Kids are looking for consistency. They're looking for someone who will be a rock, who is the same person all the time. And if that kid can find that in mom and dad, then they will always hear you. But when they find out that you say one thing, but you do another thing, the next thing you know, they begin to look elsewhere for models of consistency. 
Okay, so who do they find? Ain't nobody no more consistent than a rapper. They cuss all the time. They cuss all the time. They got a negative message all the time. They're gangster all the time. But you know what they are? They're consistent. Entertainers. They're act, actors or people like that. All of a sudden you walk in the room, everybody's picture's on the wall but yours. That means you've lost influence. They've checked out on you. They're not listening to you. That's why you have to tell them the same thing, five, uh, same thing over and over and over. They checked out because they don't believe you. Because you're inconsistent. And they're really not paying me any attention. One time they really thought I was somebody. But they heard what you had to say about me on the way home. So on your way home from service, see, they, they, they saw you when you went down and danced across the whole floor. Then on your way home, I'm sorry, I, ain't, I ain't thinking about them niggers. The kids in the back seat. Kids in the back seat listening to the inconsistency, looking at you, and oh, you could you 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 beat Michael Jackson with that moonwalk, <laughs> praising the Lord, but then you go home and you have roasted pastor and first lady and church members for dinner. So they can't tell you because they're, they're scared of you. They won't, you're the authority. But what they have done uh, is they've lost. Confidence in you. They don't believe you. So now they're looking for uh, someone else. And all of a sudden, and you know what Satan does? Satan will produce a substitute. Oh, my. And they find their substitute in the beat, in the drum, in the music, in the repetition. The repetition. The repetition. The repetition. So everybody, anybody who understands getting things done understands repetition. 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 That repetition. That's why... You know, I, I say to the musicians, y'all stop. People start shouting and, and carrying on. As soon as, they, as soon as they get caught up in a dance, you change the groove. Y'all just play the thing one way. Just stay there. So I can dance. You know, my, my knees ain't like they, like they used to be. <laughs> I can't just switch up. <laughs> Always changing it, changing it, changing it. Stay, with, stay in the pocket. <laughs> so we can shout. Repetition is the key to getting anything done. Repetition. Even if, you're, even if you're constantly wrong, it's still repetition. We, we don't have repetition. Yeah, we're, we're one way one Sunday, the next way the next Sunday. And you're not just like that at church, you're like that at home also. And you know what happens? The kids check out. And they find others to persuade them. And ladies, let me speak to you for a minute. I'm, I'm going to preach now. I'm going to preach. When the Bible talked about in the last days, perilous times would come. I'm shooters shooting up people. They didn't have fathers. They needed fathers. And men would be lovers of their own selves. They would create their own religion. Among the things that they said these people would do, and this is why, ladies, you are so important, because you are a target. The Bible says that they would creep into, into the homes and lead captive silly women. Now, listen to me now. Listen to me now. I'm not, I'm not being insulted. The Bible says, they use the word silly. Silly does not mean stupid. It doesn't mean ignorant. It doesn't mean dumb. But it does mean gullible. What is gullible? Easy to believe. They target you. You're targeted to be twisted, to be confused. And you have to admit, they're doing a good job. I mean, they got a whole genre of music out. And where they... In the music, they call you female dogs and you dance to it. You dropping it like it's hot, twerking and everything. The man calling you a, a bee. Then when you finish, you, yeah, yeah I'm your bee. Bee. You're talking about gullible. Isn't this some, it is some kind of Pentecost Sunday sermon? What kind of sermon is this? What kind of sermon is this? But yeah, they're coming after you. Coming after you. They're coming after you. They're coming after our children. They're coming after men. They, they are on the move. And people are trying to persuade us and dissuade us and get us away from Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, I'm not going along with that. Mm -mm, not one bit. What about you?
God sent the deaf angel. And the deaf angel broke Pharaoh's back. And the deaf angel came through in every house where there was no blood on the door. The oldest child died. The deaf angel said, when I see the blood, because God said he instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel to put blood on the door, over the doorpost. So when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Pass, hence the term, Passover. Fifty days after Passover, God established a celebration called Pentecost or Feast of the Harvest, Feast of Weeks. It was designed to celebrate God giving a bounty harvest. So from the first Passover all the way up until um, Acts chapter 2, 50 days after the Passover was Pentecost. All right? But on this particular day of Pentecost, the Lord set a new dispensation. See, because we, we, this is Pentecost Sunday. And, and we use the word Pentecost, but It is, it is when God made the Holy Spirit available to everyone. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was available to kings, prophets, some political figures, official people. But the common man could not get the Holy Ghost. And, and the Lord fixed it for every one of us could be filled with the Holy Ghost. Have the Holy Spirit operating in us for ourselves. It marked the official uh, beginning of two things. The church age and the last days. The last days. The last days. Some uh, contribute the beginning of the last days to the the first advent of Christ when Jesus was born. But the last days began. And we're living in the last days. And God said in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. You can't make it in this day and time without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us and he leads us and guides us into all truth. Because the enemy, the, the enemy is truth. The, not the enemy, the, the target is truth. The first casualty in a social war, in a um, cultural war, cultural battle, the first casualty is truth. The devil don't want you to believe that there's any such thing as truth. That's why no thinking believer ever uses the term my truth. There is either the truth or it's not the truth. You don't own no truth. You're not a God. You don't have a religion. And as believers, we're not called to promote our truth. We're called to promote God's truth. And we stand on God's truth. And we preach God's truth. Well, Satan is coming after God's truth. One of the, either, it was either an MB, well, I, don't, I, won't, I won't call it the, the name of the place, but one of the left talking heads the other day blamed Christianity for the shootings. So these, these last few gun shootings, it's, it's the, it, it's the, it, uh, Christian nationalism is to blame. Christian, throw that word in there. And, uh, and uh, so I want to say to the saints, they can say what they want to. Christianity is the answer. It's the answer. It's the answer. It's the answer. And I'm going to remain a Christian until I die. I, you know, uh, they call Christianity now. Christianity is associated with whiteness. And I guess that's designed to make us uh, put distance between us and Christianity. Number one, if Christianity is associated with whiteness, um, then I guess I'm white because I'm staying with Christianity. Number one, number one, number one. Number two is that's just a lie. Christianity is for every man. But it's designed to make, you know, to separate black folk from the rest of the country, to make us mad. You know, you, you hear all the time, you know, I'm a black man living in America. I can't get anywhere because I'm a black man living in America. And I always said, opposed to living anywhere else. 
black man living in America. Well, I can't make it in America. Well, I got, I got something for you. Put the chart up, then I'm going to preach. Put the chart up of life expectancy, since you just have a problem with America. All right, U.S. blacks live on average, average life, life expectancy uh, for U.S. blacks. This was according to 2011, uh, 2014 uh, census, and, and we got uh, African countries to weigh in in 2014. Uh, America 2011. Now look at this. Life expectancy then for U.S. blacks was 75 years living in America. That's on average. People live. Some people live longer. Some people don't live that long. But on average, 75 years. Uh, Guyana, 66 years. Senegal, 64. Khmer, 62. Uh oh. Liberia, 59. Congo, 58. Tongo, 57. Guyana, 55. Yes, Nigeria, 53. If we get down to Sierra Leone, you're an old man if you make it to 48. I suggest, brethren, we thank God that we're living in America. Best place on earth for, you, for us to be. Right. Amen. And the enemy want to want to keep you angry with your own country and mad at anyone who doesn't look like you, whose color is opposite yours. Then you got a problem with it. that's the devil. Jesus Christ died for every man, and and it's and it's wrong with God to who practices it. You all might quiet. I'm almost, believe it or not, I'm almost through. I'm not going to preach to you long today. I'm, I'm going to let you get out and go have your Jesus pride celebrations. Because I know you ain't celebrating that other stuff. Amen. The Lord said to me, in the midst of all this, speak a blessing to the saints. I want to bless them. And from time to time, the Lord revisits certain things, certain things. Um, and perhaps the most interesting aspect of this prayer that I've just read, this benediction, this well-spoken prayer, this spoken blessing, the most impressive aspect of this is that it is a provision for God's desire to bless his people. Point is, blessing you and blessing me is God's idea. Often we paint a picture of God as being someone who is reluctant to bless us. Reluctant to show us kindness. That you got to fast 40 days and 40 nights, pray all the time. Oh my, just go into sackcloth and ashes to get God to do something for you. When the truth is, nobody is more interested in our welfare, well-being, and blessing us than the Lord is. I mean, all of this, all of this is initiated by God. People talk about unconditional love. No one loves us unconditionally. No one loved us unconditionally but the Lord. And, and you know how, how he demonstrated his unconditional love? And John uh, 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, before I exegete that, let me show you. Keep your finger on John 3.16. Let me read to you Romans chapter number 5 and... Uh, um, verse 6 says, For when we were without strength, in due season, notice this unconditional love, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ didn't die for the noble. Christ didn't die for the wonderful. And notice this, he didn't require that we become noble, wonderful, noble, righteous, and all that for him to die for us. While the human Race was in an ungodly state. You talk about unconditional love. 
he died for ungodly people. That's unconditional love. The Bible says, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Scarcely you might find someone who's willing to hazard their life for a righteous person. Yet, pre-adventure, yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. Perhaps for a good man, you may find a handful of people who would hazard their lives. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, we were neither good nor righteous. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the unconditional uh, love. Isn't that something? He didn't require that the, 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 the drinker stop drinking for him to die for him. The murderer stopped murdering for him to die for him. He didn't require anything. He just did it because he loved us so. But he didn't die to leave us in the condition that we were in. See, now that's where the shift comes in. And this is where the unconditional love people miss it. They act as though that uh, once you meet, meet Jesus, his unconditional love uh, allowed you to remain just as sinful as you were before you met him. And that's unconditional love. That's not true. Once you meet Jesus, Jesus wants us now to live according to his word. Jesus comes in to change you. Amen. And we're not against unconditional love because we believe that once the Lord saves you, the Lord changes you. Amen. Well, he loves me unconditionally. I was in the club before I met him. I'm going back to the club. And you can't judge me because he loves me unconditionally. No, what he did unconditionally, his unconditional love was manifested in his providing a way for you to leave the club without asking anything of you. He says, I will set you free. And here's, here's how, how to do it. But now if you reject it, that's why John 3.16 comes in. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. That's because the world was already condemned. It was already condemned. And then he says this, and this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. But men chose darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now if you choose to stay in if you choose to reject his unconditional out, you make that choice. That's on you. He still loves you unconditionally, but you're going to hell because you didn't take the out that he gave you. He fixed it so that we could get out of sin and, and live a clean life and a good life. What a loving God. And it was all his idea. It was his idea. And you know what he did? He did not do a survey. He didn't do a survey. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3, 16. You know, notice what he didn't do. He didn't love the world so much that he had a meeting with man. And say, man, uh, listen. What would you have me to do uh, in order to bless you? It's about like the guy when we first built this church. Um, someone brought a man to me, and he, he this guy, uh, I won't call his name, but he, he works with churches, and he says, I'll tell you how to fill your church up. He said, now, what, what, what you need to do is you send out a survey. Send the survey out in, in all the houses in the community, and you find out what everyone wants from their church. You collect the survey, and you, you go over the data, and then you fashion your church according to the survey. And, uh, and then you begin to advertise and market to the people according to the survey, and they will come because they're going to see their suggestion on the survey. I had a question for them. I said, where is that Bible? Because 
Because I know when Jesus went to town and cities, he didn't do surveys. Mm. He went with God's truth. And people either heard it and accepted it, or they heard it and rejected it. But he didn't tweak the truth according to some survey. So I said to that guy, I'm not going to do a survey. As a matter of fact, we ain't ever had this conversation again. I, 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 I didn't even invite him back no more. I didn't like him much anyway. Said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that survey. That's, I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. This was 1998. We're going to preach the gospel. And we're going to stand on the word of God. And people who want the word of God will come. And people who don't want the word of God won't come. And I'm all right with that. And here we are in 2022. And we're doing just fine. They paid the whole thing off. And going from one faith level to the next. And God is good. If the father would have done a survey with mankind. And asked mankind what do you want me to do. Nobody would have said to the father. Give your son. Send your son to die for us. Mm -mm, that's not what we would have said. You know what we would have asked for? We would have, we would have asked for? We would have asked for another government program. Another government handout. How about another, uh, what do they call them bills? Um, stimulus package. Yes, we need free college. I want free college, a free house, a free car. Free, free, free. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I want to be able to work. I want to hold on a full-time job. But out of the 52 weeks uh, in the year, I need 50 all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to work six hours. No, that's too many. Four hours a day. And uh, that's why we've come up with stupid stuff like that. And, and God knew it. So he didn't ask. He said, I know what they need. They need my son. And they need for my son to come and die. And for my son to build a bridge where he would give them a way to, to me. And it will fix it where I can bless them. They'll, they'll end up in heaven, but I can bless them while they're here. The Bible says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is the will of God. For the blessings of God to be on you. I want to speak to you now. In the midst of all this inflation, have you ever seen a country go, go south as fast as we went? From practically zero inflation to record high inflation. Just all kinds of things. We got, we got uh, all kinds of problems going on. Amen. But I'm telling you, the Lord told me to tell you, don't fear. The Lord said, tell them, that I am going to bless them because I am the Lord and God is in charge. Somebody say amen. amen. Round week 65, round week 65, here we are now at week 107. But around week 65, right in the midst of the COVID uh, pandemic, we preach this from this text. Here we are approximately 42 weeks later and God says preach it again. Speak the blessing to the saints. Let them know that the God of the Bible is faithful. He saw us through. We grappled with COVID. We've grappled with the variants. We've grappled with whether to take the shot or not. We've grappled with family attacks. We've grappled with uh, uh, moral immorality. We're grappling God said, uh, let my people know that in the midst of the fight, it is my desire to bless them real good. And there is, my friends, a spiritual blessing, a natural blessing coming your way. Notice the repetitious use of the word Lord in the text. Verse 24, the Lord. Verse 25, the Lord. Verse 26, the Lord. From this repetition, and others like it, we get the Christian revelation of the triune God. We serve a God who is one God uh, existing in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, 
and God the Holy Ghost. You hear me, Facebook Live, hear me, YouTube. We serve one God. One God eternally existing in three, somebody said one time, three personalities. God don't have three personalities. Three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Isn't that something? Got the grace of Jesus. I've got the love of God. And we have the communion of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I love what John said in John 3, 34 and 35. John 3, 34 and 35 says, For he, Jesus, whom God the Father hath sent, speaketh the words of God the Father. For God the Father giveth him not the spirit by measure, giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. All of us have a measure of the Holy Ghost. But when God filled Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost, Jesus didn't get a measure. Jesus has the whole Holy Spirit operating in him for we serve one God who is God in three persons. And he said this, the Father loved the Son and have given all things into his hand. Don't you just love God? Don't you just love Jesus Aren't you grateful that he has given us the Holy Ghost who activates all of these things in us? And he says, as he mentions God three times, and mentions the Lord three times, in verse 24, 25, and 26, he also mentions three times the word thee. He's speaking to all of Israel, but he's also speaking to each individual. As I am preaching today to this congregation, I'm also preaching to you as an individual. And I hope that we are listening collectively, but I also hope we're listening individually. Notice that God has given each one of us a set of ears. Can't nobody hear for you. You got to hear for yourself. Jesus says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And God is speaking to every one of us. I pray to God that you are listening with faith-filled ears. And you're saying to yourself, God, if you want to bless me, then Lord, I receive my blessing. Somebody will get a blessing and someone won't. It depends on how you hear it. If you hear it uh, the way God is saying it, then you better look out because a blessing is coming your way. If you hear it through carnal ears, then you the main thing on your mind is the benediction so that you can get out. But you'll miss what God has for you. And with the things that are going on in the world today, we need the blessings of the Lord. Can I get a witness? I thank God for the church. I thank God for the congregation. I thank God for us as a whole. But we can't serve him only as a whole. We've got to serve him as individuals. I come out here to stay, Lord, until I die. I thank God that I don't have pastor salvation. For if I had pastor salvation, I would have given up on God 35 years ago when my pastor died. But here I am serving the Lord 35 years later. Praise God. Going on because I got it for myself. Amen. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I've, I've experienced Jesus for myself. There's nothing like being in the sanctuary with all the saints. We have our inheritance among them that are sanctified. And the spirit of God goes to moving. And the saints of God go to praising God. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost begin to go from heart to heart and breast to breast. Fire break out over on this section. And fire break out over there. And fire break out in the amen corner. Isn't that something? A rumble, a dance, a power moves. The, the glory of God sweeps through the church. But even though he's moving on the whole 
but he's also moving individually. For there's always somebody while the spirit of God is moving who is sitting there like a stone, emotionless. They can't feel a thing. They don't see a thing. And yet, two persons down, there's somebody else caught up in the glory of God. Father, I want what you have for me. Father, I want to live where I can see your glory, sense your glory, and walk in your glory. Let me tell you something. The prophet Isaiah said in the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord, and he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple well I'm here to tell you today in 2022 in the month of June while the world is dedicating the month to perversion we've dedicated the month to Jesus and as I look around and see I see the glory of God I see God sitting on a throne and in my eyes he's high and lifted up and his train is filling the temple and there is a glory in the house of God there's a power there's an anointing there is something on the inside that sets my soul on fire not everybody feels it not everybody senses it but those who do you ought to thank God that you do and those who don't you can if you let God open your eyes and say Lord move on me somebody shout something if you will shout something if you will You see the glory, look at your neighbor and say, I see the glory. I feel the glory. You see, one of the keys is that one of the keys to staying in the glory is you got to stay in the fight. I was talking to someone today, and I said the key to uh, not being depressed, the key to uh, longevity in Jesus. I said, I feel a depression trying to come on the way you do. I get discouraged sometimes, just like you do. I get down sometimes, just like you do. But the remedy for it is staying in the fight. Because if you stay in the fight, you don't have time to sit home and feel sorry for yourself. If you stay in the fight, you don't have time to sit around and talk about how you've been overlooked, how you've been mistreated. You don't have time to have pity parties because there's always another soul to win. There's always another battle to fight. There's always another devil to cast out. And when you find yourself caught up in the fight, God begins to revive you. He sets your soul on fire again. You forget all about what you were down over because you're seeing God take you from one faith level to the next. Do I have anybody here who wants to go higher, higher in the Lord? want to be strong in Jesus. Here's the blessing. He said, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. That is, the Lord calls good to come your way and the Lord preserve you where you can enjoy that good, where you can see that good. And I want to prophesy to somebody and tell you today that good is coming. Good is just like the Amazon truck. Good is like the FedEx man. Good, good is on the way. It's in your neighborhood. Maybe it hadn't gotten to your house yet, but if you look out the window, it's at the neighbor's house. And you ought to begin to praise God because while he's blessing your neighbor, because that means that he's on his way to your house. And the Lord told me to tell you that the good that I have for you, I'm going to let you live to see it. I'm going to let you live to enjoy it. I'm going to let you live to walk in it. Hallelujah. There is a blessing. And we serve a God who's able to bless you and then to preserve you. I want to tell you that for the last two years, during COVID, God have not kept me for the last two years during the pandemic. The Lord didn't keep me for the last two years during the pandemic. During the pandemic. During the pandemic. He didn't keep me. The Lord has kept me all my life. He's been there. He was there before COVID. He was there during COVID. And he's here now. saying that the 
the Lord didn't just become God two week, two years ago. He didn't just flex his muscles two years ago, but he was there. He was there before I gave my life to him. He was there when I was in the club. He was there in the accident. He was there, he's been there, and he's been with you all your life. And don't just single out one special time, but you ought to thank him for being a God who have sent good your way and then let you live to see it. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord calls his face to shine upon thee. Look what he said. The Lord make his face shine upon you. God's face shining upon you is God's glory. There is a glory. There is a glory. There is a glory. There's an anointing that the Lord's putting on you. There's a glory that separates you from your unsaved counterpart. Folk are going to be looking at you funny on the job. They can't put their finger on it. Something different about you. Something different that they see when they look in your eyes. Something different that they hear when they hear you talk. When you open your mouth, they turn to see what you have to say. That's glory. God knows how to anoint you with glory there is a glory that he wants to give you and he said i want to make my face shine toward you and i'm going to be gracious to you and graciousness is nothing but the favor of god hallelujah god's favor 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 it's God directing his full attention toward an individual. I'm glad that I have God's favor. I'm glad that every time, did I say every time? Every time, did I say every time? Every time I stop and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you know what God does? God does this. He gives me his full attention. Do you know that you can call on him and he will give you his full attention? Call him. Call him. He'll be healing somebody. He can heal them and give you his full attention. He can deliver in Africa and give you his full attention. He can heal the sick, raise the dead, rescue people in an accident. And at the same time, give you his full attention. I wonder, could I get a few people to shout because you have God's full attention. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, right now, just for a few seconds, while you got him on the line, while he's picked up the phone, and God has said hello, praise him. Why you praising him? Tell him. Tell him what you want. Tell him what's on your mind. Go and speak to the Lord right now. against lift up his countenance upon you that means hallelujah God pays us he gives us attention he's there for us when we call on him he's there for us he's given us his full attention he's given us his full power and as you walk through as you walk in as you walk round about the city as you walk on the job as you walk through your neighborhood as you matriculate through life that anointing the blessing is gonna follow you wherever 
you go look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, who is that following you? Neighbor, who is that stalking you? Neighbor, who is that saying to you? Everywhere you go, every step you take, every move you make, I am following you. Somebody is following you. Somebody is following me. Who is it? You know who it is. I heard the Bible say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. circumstance. God says, I'll give you peace, the ability to rise above every circumstance, the ability to rise above every circumstance, rise, rise above it all, rise, don't stay down there, somebody walked up to me the other day and said, what a night. I want you to forgive me. Oh, Lord. I said to him, I forgive you, my brother. Truth is, I've forgiven him before he asked. Why? Mm, because I understand that if you stay there, then you're down. But if you let it go, you can rise above that situation, it won't even bother you no more. I don't have time to live in get even feel. I don't have time to live, oh Lord, trying to hate somebody. There's too many good things going on in the world. There are too many wonderful things. 
thing that God is doing. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that you've let it go? Aren't you glad that you're walking in freedom, walking in joy, walking in peace? Hallelujah. Forgive your mama. Forgive your daddy. Forgive your honor. I don't even know why I'm saying this. Forgive, 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 forgive. I'm talking to somebody. Maybe they're streaming. Maybe, maybe you're not in here, but somebody needs to just forgive. That's how you rise above. Let it go. And if you let it go, God will bless you. I'm through preaching. I'm going as far as God would have me to go today. Hallelujah. The blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. Ain't no need to worry what the night is going to bring. It'll be all over in the morning. Ain't no need to worry what the night is going to bring. Oh, Lord, it'll be all over. In the morning, in the morning, yeah, you know, in the morning, in the morning, morning, rise above it all. speak a blessing on the saints, those who are streaming, oh God, that priestly blessing, the ironic benediction, caught up in a text dealing with the Nazarite vow, you switch from the Nazarites to the priests, and you tell the priests the blessing that you want your people to have, and God in this day of mass shootings, in this day of messed up morals, all this crooked stuff going on, 
we declare that our God is Lord and that our Lord is God. And we're going to stand on your word and you're going to keep us. And we receive the blessings. I want to say to you today, every one of you who are in here today, congratulations. 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 What would you congratulate me for? What God's going to do. Has he been good to you? If he's been good to you already, you ought to praise him for what he's already done. He's already healed my body. He's already kept me, never left me. He caused his face to shine upon me. He died for me. Sanctified. I told the Lord today, this morning, I was praying. I, I just, I, I enjoy talking to God. And uh, sometimes in my talking, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking, I'm moving, I'm going from one place to the other. But I'm, I'm in conversation with the Lord. And uh, I, I said to God, I said, God, you have been so good to me. And uh, I'm so undeserving. And then I, I told him, I said, but good. And maybe some of you can help me because your vocabulary is better than mine and much more extensive. I said, good seems to be such an inadequate word. It's, to say that good that God is good is almost it's almost an understatement. But then I said, but Lord, good is the word I find in the Bible. Good. Perhaps maybe maybe my dilemma is that good is perhaps way overused. Maybe it's way overused. Maybe it's applied where it shouldn't be. And so, you know, a lot of times when we say, well that's good. It, 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 it doesn't do what we want it to do. But God is good. Oh, he's good. And he's gracious. And, and we thank you, Lord, for being so good. And part of the goodness is this communion, Lord. We're honoring what you did. 2022 years ago you went to the cross you died of a vicarious death you paid the price that we owed you didn't have to do it but you did thank you Lord and Lord as we show forth your death until we come you said the, this is my body that is broken this is my blood that is shed Oh God, we're mindful of your goodness and we thank you for it. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us now. Sanctify us now so that when we participate in this that we won't do it undeservedly. We pause. And we ask your God to take away everything it's not like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us eat. Let us drink together. Oh, bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. He's good. Verse 5, as we're gathering, says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. The phrase in verse 5, thou art good, literally means the goodness is tov, which means all good. So that can't be applied to human beings. For no person is all good. We all have our shortcomings. We all have room for growth and improvement. Do you not know that the God of the Bible is the only one who cannot improve? Somebody say God gets better and better every day. It's not possible. He can't improve because he's perfect. We just become more obedient every day. We become more compliant. But all good, thou art good, literally, you're all good and you're the source of all goodness. All goodness that exists comes from God. Psalms 86 and verse 5. So Beth, I guess I have to just stay with, he's good. He's good. The source of all goodness. What a mighty God. We're going to bless the Lord now. But before we do, I want to open the altar and give someone a chance to Give their hearts to Jesus. He died for you. He loves you. He loves you unconditionally. He's opened the door for you to come and to be saved and come out of that sin. Live for him. It's nothing like living for him. If that would be one that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus, would you come? Come and get saved. Come and let the Lord deliver you. If you come, he will save you. Those who are streaming, those who are watching, we pray for you now. That unsaved man, that unsaved woman, watching from wherever you are, we pray that you give your heart to Jesus Christ. Confess him right now as your Lord. Just pray with me and say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as in my life. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe that God the Father raised you from the dead and I accept you in my heart as my Savior thank you Lord for saving me in Jesus name Amen and if you pray that prayer with me and you, you mean it from my heart then the Lord heard your cry and the Lord has saved you now you need to find someone and tell them that you've given your heart to Jesus you can find a good church. Call the upper room, 919-829-6184. 919-829-6160. We'll get you in touch with someone who can help you grow in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. We're making ready our offering. And I'm going to ask, yes, yeah, Sister um, Vandross. Where's Sister Vandross? Amen. She's coming. Come here, dear. Glory to God. God gave her a little miracle, baby. Amen. And I want to pray a prayer of blessings on this child. She said, Preacher, I want you to bless my baby. Somebody say amen. Look at that pretty little girl. 
Oh, she's beat the odds. They said she wasn't going to make it. But God. Oh, don't get me started again. Won't he do it? Mm. How you doing? It's good to see you. Let me see the pretty little thing. Oh, that's right, baby. Oh, look at it. She did it. Look at her. Ain't she beautiful? Father, this beautiful little girl. Lord, bless her. Bless her and keep her, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you gave this child a miracle. You took her through. And you brought her to where she is right now. And I ask you, God, to continue to make her every bit whole. And as she grows, oh God, may her mother tell her and share with her the miracle that she is, that her existence is a miracle. And God, keep her mama and cause your face to shine upon her. In the name of Jesus, you're a mighty God, a true God, and an everlasting King. The blessings of God be on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless your beautiful daughter. Amen. Look at her. Praise the Lord. Oh, the prettiest little thing. Prettiest little thing. Say amen. Somebody give God praises. Hallelujah. Go in the peace of God be with you. Stay strong. Stay strong. She's helpful? Good, good. Uh, we want to help. Amen. See, we're, we're an involved church. See, because church work uh, continues after the benediction. And uh, it, it continues before service and after service. See, a lot of people have a misconception of the church because they think that when they come for service and that's all you see, you think that's all we do. But John, if they worked in the church and, and hung around, there were no church runs 24 7. We ain't got enough staff to keep up with it. This thing wear us out. Amen. They, they get a call from me anytime. 2 a.m., 3, get up, wake up next morning, check the text. Ask me one day, well, when do you sleep? I don't even know how to answer that. But God knows, and God does. So the Lord bless her, and the Lord keep her in Jesus' name. Amen. Say amen, say amen. Isn't the Lord good? Isn't the Lord good and worthy to be praised? Make ready your tithe and your offerings, and we're going home. We're going home today. Amen. What a mighty God. Did you get blessed by the word? Now, y'all, y'all didn't get mad with me. Oh, this LBGT stuff, did you? If you did, you got the devil in you. Amen. I ain't giving an inch. <laughs>